We often get asked exactly how do we onboard a new client into our Google Ads agency. Today, I'm going to walk you through that. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mike Mancini, a Google Ads agency owner for the last nine years. When we onboard a brand new client into our Google Ads agency, we want to make sure we can get all of the information that we need to set up the entire campaign without having to contact them again. The next time we contact them will be right before we turn the campaign on. At that time, we will go over any final questions that we have, answer any questions that they need, but most importantly, at that point, we will also set their expectations. Our onboarding process is a very simple spreadsheet, and I'm going to walk you through that now. Now, just a quick heads up, this is a very simple spreadsheet. I'll walk you through it step by step. We've already gone through the sales call and the client wants to use our services. So at that point, if they want to talk to us and go through the onboarding process, we're happy to do that. Otherwise, we'll set up a call with them, tell them it's for our onboarding process, and it will probably take about 20 minutes. If that's the case, most of this information you'll already have, so you can enter it in here. So we already have our client name, their address, if you don't have it, or if this is the first time you're speaking to them and they want to onboard right away, you'll get that there. We have their website. This is their business phone number. This is where the calls are going to. When somebody calls from their Google Ads campaign, they need to go to this number. Once we get all this information, we go through our setup process, we're going to be setting up tracking phone numbers. This is where we will put the tracking phone number. As we're building the accounts, we want to put this number here just so we have it later. As we're building it, we have all the information in one place. This is the email. So if somebody fills out a form on their landing page, this is where the emails are going to go. Here's our monthly ad budget. You'll ask them what they want to spend on their advertising spend and you put that in there. Here are the zip codes of the area that we want to run the ads to. Now, if they don't have the zip codes, you can just say, you know, going out 10 miles from their business location, you can put that in the campaign when you build it. Days and times to run ads, we'll put that there. Google Ads access. Now, if our client does not have a Google Ads account, we'll just write in, set up a new account. If they already have a Google Ads account, we will send them an invitation to get access to that. Client colors. When we're building the landing pages, we wanna basically kind of mimic what it looks like on their website, like with their uh, logo, we want to have the same color. So there's typically two or three colors on a website that someone will use. We will use a tool like Color Cop, and we will literally just go and you can see you just drag it and it gives you the color code. We will copy those and put them in here. So when we're building landing pages, we have that information available. Now the main keywords or the main services that they want to concentrate on, we will put those in here. Maybe here's some other service keywords, some other ideas of things that they might want to advertise for, we'll put those in here, what they don't want to do. So for example, if this company does not want to do uh, wood floor repair, we can just type in repair. Okay, it gives us an idea. Uh, so when we're building out the campaign, we know what to avoid. These are the typical questions we have on a form, the name, phone, email, how can we help you? We just confirm that that's okay with the client. Sometimes they want us to add in another field. We'll put that in here. The credit card info for the campaign, obviously we never enter their credit card information in here. Uh, I just say it's on file or I say it's already in the Google Ads campaign, whatever it might be, just so I know where it's at. Images. I will sometimes put here, if a client has images, they're going to send them, email them to me. I'll put email or where I can find them because I want to make sure that when we have the landing pages, when we're building them, we know where we can find that information. Testimonials. This one is key. Where can we find testimonials for the client? Sometimes it's their website. Sometimes it's their Google business reviews. I will at least put that here, maybe a link to it so I can quickly access it as I'm building the pages. Callouts. These are important because as you're building a campaign, you will enter in callouts, but these will also help you write some of the ad headlines and descriptions that you might have. Also might help you add, write some of the good headlines for your landing pages as well. So for example, you know, everybody does satisfaction guarantee, but these are just some ideas. So for example, a really good one might be same day service or, or even something like 100% satisfied on the first call or $100 back, whatever it might be. These are kind of some selling points and I put these in here so when I'm writing my ads, I have some ideas. Now, average revenue per client. So here I will ask a client, if you were to get 10 new jobs this week, on average, how much revenue are you bringing in a job? Now, I've already qualified them on the sales call, but I want to make sure I have this in my record. So if they were going to tell me, you know what, if we make an average of $50 on a job, probably not going to be really great for Google Ads. But I will put this in here because down the road, if a client comes back and says, we've only closed five jobs this month, 
and you know we don't know if this is worth it and you know maybe their average revenue is ten thousand dollars i'm like well you closed five jobs at ten thousand dollars you closed fifty thousand dollars worth of jobs and your campaign only cost you you know fifteen hundred i will sometimes come back to this number and use it when talking to clients another thing i will always ask is if they have it maybe average profit i just want to keep that in mind as well as an average close rate and i put minus 50 percent here the reason I say minus 50% on an average close rate is because when you're typically talking to someone and you're asking them what their close rate is, if they got 10 leads is in this week, how many are they closing? I can't tell you how many times I hear 70, 80, even 90%. Everybody thinks they're the world's greatest salesman. However, when you really look at it, it's typically much lower. But I will always ask a client what their typical close rate is. Then if we have any problems down the road, and it's happened a couple times in my agency where a client will call me up and say, you know what, all these leads are crap, we're not converting any of them, and I can say, well, you told me that your average close rate was 70%, right? I can refer back to these numbers. Now, it's not to throw it in their face, but it's to try to get to the source of the real problem. In that actual case, they weren't closing any leads because their salesperson was upset and he was tanking all the calls, so he actually ended up losing his job. So it was a really bad situation, but we were able to figure out what's going on. But this is just a good piece of information for you. The JavaScript code is our code from CallRail when we set up our tracking numbers. We'll put that here so we have it in building our landing pages. Google Ads conversion code, same thing. We'll take that from Google, put it here so when we're building our land landing pages, we have all that info, and then any other information down here. Is this onboarding process better or maybe even worse than yours? Do you have a different process? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. Now, while this is a very simple spreadsheet that you could probably do on your own, if you want ours and you want to find out how we do everything inside of our Google Ads agency, head on over to Ads Agency Unlocked. This is a course I've built where you can learn how to start your own Google Ads agency, build the one that you have, or scale your existing agency. I show you everything I've ever done in my business from before right up to now. It's not only how to start your own ads agency, but how to set up campaigns, how to optimize them, how to manage clients, how to outsource your work, and how to scale your business. Check that out. I'll put a link in the description area below. And if you got some great value out of this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, and that little bell icon so you'd be notified of when I release new videos each and every week. And if you want to see some more videos like this over to the right hand side, you will see some more videos about how I run my agency. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.